Greetings, dear viewers of the History Without Myths channel, my name is Vladlen Muraev. Today we will talk about an event that is practically not mentioned in Ukraine now, no books are written about it and no films are made. It is very far from Ukraine geographically, it is considered part of the history of Japan or Russia, but it is very closely connected with Ukraine. The 27th to 28th of May is exactly 115th anniversary from the Battle of Tsushima, the largest clash at sea since the Battle of Trafalgar 1805th year, to the Battle of Jutland 1916th, which was the largest during the First World War. The Battle of Tsushima is a component of the Russo-Japanese War, which was fought for dominance in the Far East. Both Russia and Japan had their own aggressive goals in this conflict. However, Russian imperialism received a very painful blow to its imperial ambitions. In the course of this war, the Russians were constantly defeated both on land and at sea. The fleet sent to the Far East became Russia's last hope to gain the initiative and turn the tide of the war in its favor. When talking about the Tsushima naval battle, of course, one cannot ignore the events that preceded this battle, namely the march of the Russian squadron to the Far East. This campaign continued. Just imagine, seven months. The fact is that in October, 1904th year from the Baltic Sea, the Russians send the 2nd Pacific Squadron to the Far East. It was sent in such a very long way, across the Atlantic Ocean around Africa, through the Indian Ocean and further to the Far East. This squadron was commanded by Vice Admiral Zinovai Rashestvinsky, a sailor with experience of participation in the Russian Turkish War of 1877 and 78 years. However, this admiral did not have any experience of commanding a large naval unit before. During a military conflict. In fact, he did not believe in the success of this operation. And even during the sea campaign, he asked for his resignation several times. However, they did not resign him. It was announced that he would retire with honors after he led the fleet to the Far East. This path was 33,000 kilometers and was traveled in seven months. In addition, the Russian command believed that the forces of the 2nd Pacific Squadron would not be enough, so in February 1905th were sent to help this squadron also the 3rd Pacific Squadron, also from the Baltic. But since it consisted of ships of smaller tonnage, it was sent by a shorter route, through Gibraltar, the Mediterranean Sea and the Suez Canal. Eventually the two squadrons merged. It should be noted that by the time the Russian fleet was able to arrive at the site of hostilities, the main Russian fortress in the far east, Port Arthur capitulated, the entire 1st Pacific Squadron died there and in fact there was no one to help. However, in St. Petersburg, they still decided that Rashestvensky should break through to the far east, to Vladivostok, in order to fight to the victorious end. Rashestvensky decided to break through to the far east by the shortest route, through the Korean Strait, namely through its eastern part, which is called the Tsushima Strait, near the island of Tsushima. There, the Japanese fleet, which was stationed near its bases, was waiting for them. It is worth noting that the Japanese fleet in terms of the strength of its main ships, battleships, was approximately equal to the Russian fleet of Rashestvensky. However, the Japanese fleet had the advantage in virtually all other components, namely. The Japanese had significantly more cruisers and destroyers. Japanese sailors were more experienced and hardened in heavy battles. They could shoot much better. In general, the Japanese ships differed by a much higher percentage of hits than the Russian ones. The Japanese had an advantage in speed and maneuverability over the Russian squadron. They were also informed of the enemy's every move through their intelligence. The high morale of the Japanese sailors completely contradicted what was happening on the Russian squadron. The Russians were demoralized by constant defeats. In addition, they are very tired after a seven-month campaign. There was even such a factor as the better color of the ships. The Japanese ships were gray and actually merged with the color of the sea and sky. While the Russian squadron went into battle almost like a parade. Just think, huge black ships with bright yellow smokestacks. An ideal target for targeting Japanese gunners. 
therefore, it is not surprising that the result of this battle was catastrophic for the Russians. The Japanese fleet was commanded by Admiral Hayachiro Togo, an extremely experienced sailor who had previously studied in Great Britain. It was already the fifth war for him. He commanded the Japanese fleet from the beginning of the Russo-Japanese War and had already inflicted several heavy defeats on the Russians during the Port Arthur campaign. The Russian fleet suffered an unheard of and stunning defeat in the Battle of Tsushima. The fate was decided in an artillery battle on the 27th of May literally in a few hours. During this period, the main forces of the Russian squadron were destroyed. Later, during the night and the following day, May 28th, the Japanese finished off individual Russian ships or groups of ships. Let's see, out of 38 Russian ships commanded by Rashestvensky, 21 died in battle or were sunk by the crew after the battle. Among them, the newest and most powerful Russian battleships went to the bottom, Prince Suvorov, Emperor Alexander III, Borodino, and Osliabia. Another seven ships were captured by the Japanese, and, what a shame, these ships were then commissioned into the Japanese fleet and continued to serve under Japanese flags and with Japanese names. Another six Russian ships were turned back and entered the ports of neutral countries, where they were disarmed until the end of the war. Only three, I emphasize, three out of 38, three ships broke through to Vladivostok. But what kind of ships were these? These were small destroyers Bravi and Badri and a small non-armored cruiser Almaz. By the way, this very cruiser Almaz will be on the Black Sea in 1918, and when it is captured by anarchists and Bolsheviks, they will commit acts of real terror there, in particular, they will burn their political opponents in the furnace of this very ship Almaz. This is such a sad story. But, of course, it was simply impossible to fight further with a small cruiser and two destroyers. Before that, one more ship of the Russians returned to the Baltic in general, it was the transport in Otter, it managed to escape from the battlefield. More than 5,000 Russian sailors died, and more than 7,000 were captured by the Japanese, among them, by the way, Admiral Zinovai Rashestvensky, who was very seriously wounded several times, in particular in the head. He was treated in a Japanese hospital, where he was visited by Admiral Hayachi Togo. After the end of the war, Rashestvensky returned home to St. Petersburg and resigned. He was sent to court, but the court acquitted Rashestvensky, despite the loss of the fleet. He was justified because he was seriously wounded and could not actually control the battle. Rashestvensky did not live long. On New Year's Eve of the year 1909 at home, he celebrated with close relatives and friends, but went to the next room, heart attack and he dies instantly. He was buried there in St. Petersburg, but even the grave has not survived to this day. Against the background of such a devastation, the losses of the Japanese were simply laughable, only 117 dead Japanese, which, imagine, is 43 times less than the dead Russians. The Japanese fleet lost only three small destroyers, and one of them sank not because it was fired upon by the Russians, but because it collided with its own ship. No one expected such a result. Even the Japanese themselves did not expect such a stunning success. Admiral Hayachiro Togo wrote in his report to Emperor Meiji after the battle in accordance with all the requirements of Japanese court etiquette. In this battle, the enemy forces were not particularly different from ours, and the enemy officers and teams selflessly fought for their homeland. The fact that, despite these circumstances, our combined fleet won a victory and had such a wonderful success, we owe entirely to the high virtues of His Majesty the Emperor, and not to human efforts. I must be especially grateful to the invisible patronage of the souls of the imperial ancestors for the fact that the losses of our fleet among personnel turned out to be so small. Tsushima was the biggest defeat at sea in the history of Russia. It led to the collapse of the far eastern expansion of the Russian Empire and the quick natural end of the Russo-Japanese War. Russia had to abandon the oceanic strategy and return to the continental one. The defeat in the far east led to the deployment of revolutionary processes in the Russian Empire, including in Ukraine. 
exactly one month after the Battle of Tsushima, a mutiny broke out on the battleship Potemkin on the Black Sea. By the way, among the organizers of this uprising were Ukrainians, Oleksandr Kovalenko, Krihori Vakalenchuk, Panis Matyushenko. Instead, Japan after Tsushima entered the cohort of the most powerful states in the world and the same imperial Japan that during the Second World War will challenge the whole world and conquer colossal territories from the islands of Alaska to the borders of India and Australia, this imperial Japan was born in the Battle of Tsushima. Interestingly, Russia, despite its imperial ambitions, has not won a single naval battle in the last 167 years. The last naval battle won by the Russians was the Battle of Sinope on the Black Sea, when Russia managed to defeat the Turks. This happened back in the era of wooden sailing ships. You ask, what's the point of Ukraine? While preparing this broadcast, I conducted a study that allowed us to find out that approximately every fifth participant in the battle on the Russian side was Ukrainian, that is, by the way, from three to four thousand sailors. Among them were both officers and ordinary sailors, even in hopeless conditions, many of them showed true heroism. Here are some of their stories, Captain First Rank Vladimir Mikla, he was the commander of the coastal defense battleship Admiral Ashikov. This battleship, after the defeat of the squadron, tried to break through the Sea of Japan to Vladivostok on its own, but on the second day of the battle, the 28th of May, was surrounded by Japanese cruisers and sunk after an artillery battle. Vladimir Mikla, together with his crew. He escaped in the water, but when Japanese boats approached them, wanting to pick up the crew of the Russian ship, he refused to be rescued. Shouting in English, save the sailors first, and then the officers. Vladimir Mikla was wounded and drowned in the Sea of Japan, the water temperature that day was plus 10 to plus 11 degrees. Captain of the second rank Joseph Matusevich commanded the destroyer Bezuprekne. By the way, Yusuf Matusevich was born in the city of Mikhailiv, a Ukrainian city. This destroyer Bezuprekne also tried to break through to Vladivostok, but on the morning of the 28th of May it was sunk by the Japanese and not a single sailor escaped from it. Captain of the second rank Mikola Kolomoitsev, a native of the village of Pokrovka, Mikhailiv Oblast. Commanded the destroyer Bini. He picked up more than 200 sailors from the destroyed battleship Osliabia. However, the destroyer Bini itself was also heavily damaged, and Kolomoitsev ordered it to be sunk, and the crew transferred to another ship. The destroyer was sunk so that the Japanese would not get it. At least two Ukrainians left detailed memories of their participation in the Battle of Tsushima. The senior doctor of the cruiser Aurora. This cruiser participated in the Battle of Tsushima. Vladimir Kravchenko was born in the Kherson province. By the way, he was the first in the world to use X-ray examination of the wounded on a ship after a battle. He wrote a memoir called Across the Three Oceans. Vladimir Kostenko, a shipbuilding engineer from Veliki Budish, Poltava region, was on board the battleship Oral. And he was in Japanese captivity, then he wrote a memoir called On an Eagle in Tsushima. It is also interesting to note that two future commanders of the Black Sea Fleet of the era of the Ukrainian Revolution of 1917 participated in this battle. These are Mihailo Sablin and Vyacheslav Klochkovsky. And second-rank Captain Peter Payton Fanton de Varayan took part in the Battle of Tsushima, he was a cousin of the outstanding scientist Eugene Payton. The same Eugene Payton, who designed the bridge over the Dnipro in Kiev, as well as the pedestrian park Bridge of Love. By the way, Peyton Fanton de Varayan, respectively, is a great-uncle of the current president of the National Academy of Sciences of Ukraine, Boris Payton. In the Battle of Tsushima, he was a senior officer of the cruiser Izumrud, and in 1918 he already became a rear admiral of the fleet of the Ukrainian state. The story of a simple fireman should also not be overlooked. From the battleship Navarin, Porfiry Dirks is a villager from the village of Mikhailovka in Padilla, now Brashad district of Venetia. Only three people survived from the crew of this battleship, which was destroyed by Japanese destroyers on the night of May 28. Three out of almost 700 sailors. And one of them is our compatriot, Porfiry Dirks, he spent more than 14 hours in the cold sea floating on the lid of a wooden box. 
In a semi-conscious state, he was picked up by a random British ship. In this way, Porphyry Dirch was saved. He returned to his native village, got married and worked as a veterinarian. He had ten children, nine of whom died in childhood, and the only living son died on the fronts of World War II. That's the human destiny. By the way, no matter how far Tsushima may seem from us, there are at least two memorial places in Ukraine that are related to this battle. However, very few people know about them. The first place is the village of Krupoderency of the Pogrebyshchen district of the Venetsia region. There is a monument there, in the former estate of the Ignatius Counts. Counts Ignatiev lost a son and a nephew in the battle. Therefore, a monument was erected there in honor and memory of this victim. And the second place is the city of Lubodin in the Kharkiv region, where in the former estate of the Sviatopolk Mursky princes there is a symbolic grave of Lieutenant Vladimir Dan, who died on board the battleship Emperor Alexander III, not a single sailor escaped from the ship. One hundred and fifteen years have passed. But two ships that participated in the Tsushima naval battle have survived to this day. It is symbolic that one of them is Japanese, and the other is Russian. If you want to see a Japanese ship, you need to go to the Japanese city of Yokosuka. The Japanese flagship battleship Mikasa, on which Admiral Togo was in this battle, is preserved there. A monument to Admiral Hayachiro Togo is also now installed next to the ship. Well, on the Russian side, the famous cruiser Aurora has been preserved, which stands in St. Petersburg, but it is not mainly known for the Battle of Tsushima. As we all know, subsequent events made him, of course, a legend of the Bolshevik coup. And recently, in the year 2018, the news spread around the world that South Korean searchers found the sunken Russian cruiser Dmitro Donsky near the island of Yulindo in the Sea of Japan. It is located at a depth of 434 meters and, according to unverified rumors, there could be 200 tons of gold on board. However, this information has not yet been confirmed. Well, in conclusion, we have to say about the Battle of Tsushima in fiction and cinema. In fact, there are not many works on this topic, but we must mention Oleksiy Novikov Pryboy's novel Tsushima, which, of course, presents a Russian view of this battle because Novikov Pryboy himself took part in the Battle of Tsushima and then wrote a novel on this topic. And you can learn about the Japanese look from the feature film Battle in the Sea of Japan. The film was shot in the 1969th year and the Russians are played there by American, British or Turkish actors. Therefore, strictly speaking, they were able to play the Russians in approximately the same way as Arnold Schwarzenegger in the action film Red Heat. I have the honor to add. Data appeared that three Japanese transport ships entered the port, Jensen, and disembarked there. What? What is your evidence? Dear viewers, thank you for your attention, subscribe to our channel History Without Myths so as not to miss new videos, like, write comments, ask questions. We are very interested in your reaction. See you.